Okay, so tonight we are going to talk about population trends and transitions in Larimer County and specifically within the Poudre School District. Here we go. So overall, there are some general trends that have been going on in Colorado. Population is growing, but at a much slower rate than it has been recently. And a lot of that has to do with a decline in births and an increase in deaths. Migration and mobility, which is a big component of population change in Colorado, has been slowing as well. And this has started even before the pandemic. The growth in Colorado is very concentrated, primarily along the front range. Also, aging. Aging is one of the most important characteristics of a population because it affects everything. And we'll talk about the specific dynamics occurring in Larimer County. And our fifth major trend is that there is increasing I'm going to interrupt here because we are, seem to have lost sound now. So if we can maybe have a moment to try and fix that, Nancy? Yeah, Nancy, I don't think you can hear us either. Just Tell a moment. That nationwide. Yes? Oh, you can't. Yeah, we lost sound there for a moment. I'm so sorry. If you could start on, I think, this slide, the beginning of this slide would be great. Okay. Thank you. So the slide with the map of the United States. Yes, the big picture that, growth is slowing. Okay, okay. So growth is slowing in Colorado, but it's slowing even more in the United States as a whole. Again, a lot having to do with decline in births. Um, 18 states lost population just in these past two years from April of 2020 through July, 2022. And Colorado's growth over these past two years has not been as fast or as large as it was in the previous decade. I mentioned that growth in Colorado is constant. Of the 64 counties had increases in their population from 2010 to 2020, and those with decreases. The, de the counties with decreases are shown in shades of blue and those that are red, orange, and yellow are increases. And of course, Larimer County did have an increase and it was one of the larger increases in the state. In 2022, this is our most current population estimates. Larimer County is the seventh largest county in the state. But in terms of year over year growth from 2021 to 2022, Larimer ranked fourth. Behind its neighbor to the east, Weld County, which ranked first, and then other counties in Metro Denver, and finally El Paso County, in where Colorado Springs is. But when we talk about school districts, especially ones that do not contain the whole county, we need to look at the municipal level population. Now, looking at a map of the Poudre School District's boundaries, it appears to be the northern half of Larimer County, and it contains Fort Collins, Wellington, Timnif, and a large part of unincorporated Larimer County. This chart is showing all the municipalities within Larimer County, and I've sort of ordered them so that those that are in the Poudre School District are the top, top ones, so Fort Collins, Wellington, Timnif. Overall, from 2010 to 2020, we already know from that previous map that Larimer County had an increase in population. It actually increased nearly 20% with an additional almost 60,000 people over that 10 year period from 2010 to 2020. But the last two years from 2020 to 2022, the most recent information, the most recent data shows slower growth rates, still growing, but not quite as fast as we were last decade. Overall, the growth rate in population for Larimer County as a whole over these past two years was 1.9%. Now, all the different municipalities in the county grew at very differing rates. You'll notice uh, a place like Timnip. Over the past decade, from 2010 to 2020, it grew almost 1,000%. It increased by almost 5,000 people, where it had started at about 600. So we have some very drastic differences in the growth rates in the different parts of the county. 
Now, Fort Collins, which is the largest city in the county, had the largest growth by number, but a smaller percentage change. Likewise, Loveland is the second largest city in the county, and it too had a large number increase, but a smaller percentage change. So some of those places, like Timnit, that grew very rapidly, like Johnstown and Berthoud, and who's the other one? Even Windsor and Wellington had very high growth rates comparatively, far over the countywide average. But they were much smaller places to begin with, so the absolute number is not, say, quite as large as the gains that were made within Fort Collins. But this is very important to note because future growth depends on where that growth is happening within the county. And we'll talk about that more in a bit. So some right now we're going to go over some just brief principles behind demographic change. We're starting at the state level and we'll go down to Larimer County. First, population will change for three reasons. Someone is born, someone dies, someone moves in or out. And this chart attempts to show all three of those variations back to the year 1970. So over this 52 year time period, we had population growth due to natural increase, which is the blue bars. And natural increase is quite literally births minus death. And it's been relatively stable over the past 52 years. But the red bars are indicating net migration, those people moving in minus those moving out. And that varies quite greatly year over year. You'll note in the late 1980s was the only time period in this past 52 years where there were more people moving out of Colorado than moving in. But if you look in the middle of the chart in the 1990s, we had several, almost a decade of large in migration, almost 80,000 people per year. But this idea that growth is slowing, if you look to the far right of the chart, these past few years, about past seven years from say 2015 onward to 2022, both that natural increase, those blue bars, and the net migration, the red bars, they're increasing, they're positive each year. But each year for the past seven years, they have been less each year. So less natural increase, less migration, meaning the change in our population each year is growing, but not as fast as it was in the previous year. We have these charts and this data for all 64 counties in the state. And here we have Larimer County. One of the most obvious or uh, dramatic things about this chart is just how large the net migration is, especially as a share of the annual population change. Yes, there is natural increase, births minus deaths. And like the statewide numbers, it's fairly stable over the years, but it's the net migration that can vary greatly year to year. Now, like the state as a whole, we look to the far right, we do see positive increases, but less each year, starting at about 2015 or 2016. Larimer though, just has some, steps up, Larimer typically has been growing faster than the state as a whole and has had uh, increases in its net migration. And it has not been less each year. It has a bit of some stair steps, some years up, some years down. But you will note that the natural increase, births minus deaths, has been declining each year for the past few years. If we separate out births and deaths, instead of looking at it as, net, as natural increase as a whole, but look at the differences between the, num the births and the deaths, we see some trends. This chart is showing Colorado as a whole back to 1970, but also looking to the future, to the year 2050. That's the dashed lines. The blue line is births, and it goes up it levels out, it goes up, it's been going down. We anticipate it to go back up again. And this is absolute number of births. This isn't a rate. This is not measured against the number of population or women of childbearing age. This is just an absolute number of births for the entire state. Deaths, on the other hand, typically is just going up. Now, during the pandemic from 2020 through about 2022, there was an uptick in the number of deaths but it is, we anticipate 
And I think the most recent data is showing that we have returned to a pre-pandemic level of deaths. So still increasing, but not at that height rate that we saw during the pandemic. Now this increase is perfectly natural. Colorado's population is aging, and this is exactly what we would expect as our population gets older. We'll talk more about this forecast though. Why do we anticipate this increase in births statewide? And we'll see the chart for Larimer in a bit as well. So one of the reasons for this decrease in births has to do, or some of the interesting things we can find out is that there have been differences in the number of births by the age of mother. So from 2011 to 2020, for the state as a whole, we have found that there have been fewer births to the youngest mothers and an increase in births to women over the age of 30. So there have been great decreases over that decade of time in teenage mothers, in women of births to women in their 20s. But this increase peaking at about age 34 or 35 in births to older mothers. Now the gain from the older mothers is less than the decrease from the younger mothers. So we do still see a decrease in the total number of births, but it is very important to see these changes by age of mother, because there is a lot of differences in explanation for that. One of which is that long acting reversible contraception became available for young women. And that program definitely saw uh, a lot of young women taking that uh, participating in that program. And so there had been this reduction in births to the youngest mothers. But this trend in decrease in births is not unique to Colorado. In fact, in the United States as a whole, from 2010 to 2020, there were 1 million fewer children in the United States. There were 1 million fewer people under the age of 18 in 2020 than there was in 2010 even though the population as a whole in the United States increased by over 22 million during that time. This map of the United States shows those states shaded in blue that had a decrease in their child population over that decade, and those shaded red, orange, and peach pink color had increases. Now, Colorado did have an increase, but you'll note it's sort of that beige peach color so it had a smaller increase, but it still did have an increase. You'll note the areas that have had decreases are the New England states, the Midwestern Great Lakes states, some Southern states, but also California. So this trend has been happening nationwide and within Colorado, it's been quite variable. The uh, counties shaded red, orange, and yellow had increases in their population of children between 2010 and 2020. And you'll note that Larimer is red. It had some of the largest increases in the child population over the last decade, along with Weld and some of the Metro Denver counties. But what's been interesting is that even though some counties in Metro Denver had an increase in their children in their child population, others had a decrease, most notably Boulder County and Jefferson County. Now, throughout the rest of the state, in the rural areas, in the ski resort areas, it has varied as well. So we talked about births and deaths. That third component is migration, the number of people moving in minus those moving out. And one trend we have found consistently over the decades for Colorado is that when Colorado has new jobs, when there are jobs tend to draw people to the state. There is this correlation between the number of new jobs and the migration to the state. The blue bars on this chart are showing that change in jobs, while the red line is showing the net migration over these each five-year period. Now, it's not absolute. They don't match exactly completely. You'll note that in 2005 and 2010, that time period, there were hardly any new jobs. You may also recall that that was during the Great Recession, where every state in the country was having a recession. Every state lost jobs, but Colorado continued to gain population. Prior to the pandemic, this chart looked a little bit different, that the bar for 2020 and 2025 
were actually about the same height. We had to reduce the number of new jobs in that 2020 to 2025 time period because of the pandemic effects. In those early days of 2020 and 2021, many jobs were lost in Colorado. They have all since been regained, but that had kind of thrown off the the nice line, the nice uh, bars that we had. That's why the 2025 bar seems so much higher. Prior to the pandemic, if that not, had not happened, we anticipated, our forecast showed an almost equal number of jobs for each of those five-year time periods. But going forward to the future, 2030 through 2050, you'll note that we do anticipate new jobs in the state, but that, bar, that line showing net migration is actually higher than the number of new jobs being created. That has to do with the fact that because of our aging, we are anticipating a large number of people to be retiring or leaving the workforce and thus opening up existing jobs. So in addition to all the new jobs that might be created in our economy due to expansions or new industries, we anticipate there to be an opening due to people in those older age groups retiring. Therefore, we would expect more people to migrate to the state to fill all of those jobs. Now, typically Colorado over the past several decades has followed the same trend that the people who tend to be the net migrants to the state are between the ages of about 25 and 38. This chart along the bottom, we have every single year of age from babies on the left to elders on the right. And these blue bars are indicating the net change, or the Colorado's net migration by age from 2010 to 2020. But as I said, this trend, this pattern has held for the past several decades. Colorado typically attracts people in that 25 to 35 age group. We attract young adults. Now, if we were looking at this for the, say, the state of Florida or Arizona, it would look quite different because Florida and Arizona, for example, are retirement destinations. They attract people in those older age groups. So we would see net migration in a state like Florida starting at age 55. And it would look very different from where we see it in Colorado. We tend to attract these younger age groups. And we know that there's a strong correlation between the migration and jobs. So let's talk about age. Age affects everything. It affects your preferences. It affects whether you're in the labor force or not. It affects what services you need. What we're looking at here is a chart of Colorado's population in 2023 by a single year of age. So again, uh, age across the bottom, babies to the left, elders to the right. Now, the one thing that stands out is that Colorado has more 31 year olds in 2023 than any other single year of age. More 31 year olds than 14 year olds, more 31 year olds than 65 year olds. The other thing to note is that if you look on the left, those younger, the children population, you will see that slowdown in births in that there are more 15 year olds than 14 year olds on down. The other thing to point out besides the large population of people in their early 20s through 30s is the purple bars. Those are people who were born between the ages of 1964 and 1946, typically called the baby boomers. And there is a large group of them who are approaching the age of 65. Some have already crossed over by having birthdays, by staying or by aging in Colorado. But Colorado typically has not had a very large population of those older age groups. So this large population of baby boomers moving into those older age groups is somewhat unprecedented for the state. Now, overall, in 2023, the share of population in Colorado that is 65 and over is about 16%. Hang on to that stat because we're going to look now at Larimer County. Now Larimer County, the first thing that stands out on this chart is the high number of people in say about 18 through 24. That of course is Colorado State University. 
So to take out the student population, because in terms of demographic change, we consider that student population to just replace itself each year. So to the idea that it doesn't age, they don't give birth, they don't die. So if we take out that student population that is sort of a constant in Larimer County every year, it ends up looking like this. You still do have a bit of a peak of 20 year olds, but when those students are removed, we do see a different age distribution. We do see a larger population in those red lines, sort of those mid twenties through about 40, which actually correlates to what we would call the millennial population. We see that slowdown in child population that from 20 down to zero, there are fewer kids each year for each age group. But that older population, Larimer County actually has a higher percentage than the state as a whole of people 65 years and over. And you can kind of see that in this chart as compared to the one for the state as a whole. But there's more in those that baby boomer age and that those people are approaching or have crossed over into the 65 years and over. One of the tools on our website is a map where you can select different time periods and different age groups and see what the forecast shows for the change in population for all the counties. Right here, we're looking at a change in the school age population. For this, we, it's age five through 19. So not quite a uh, high school age, but it's because it's five year age groups, that's what we're going with. But in this population, you see most of the counties are sort of that shades of blue, meaning that they have decreases in their school age population. The one county that we see with a large increase is Weld. Also El Paso County, where Colorado Springs is, is anticipating an increase. But many of the Metro Denver counties anticipate a decrease in their school age population in 2030 as compared to 2020. Larimer County also has a small decrease, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But overall, if we look to 2030 and break out the population by various age groups, we see some different things. Looking at Colorado as a whole, between 2020 and 2030, we would anticipate the population as a, in total to increase about 10%. But different age groups are increasing or decreasing at different rates. For the state as a whole, that school age population, this time we're looking at age five through 17, statewide we anticipate a decrease, about 4% in the number of school age kids in 2030 as compared to 2020. But that zero to four year old population, babies who are being born during that time, we do anticipate an increase at about 8%, still less than the total population as a whole. But the very prominent bars on this chart are at the bottom, the older age groups, specifically people aged 75 to 84. Their population is expected to increase 75% from 2020 to 2030. And those 85 years and over are expected to increase 50%. Now the same chart for Larimer is pretty similar. Those large increases in the oldest age groups um, Larimer as a whole, we anticipate to grow faster at 13% as a total population compared to the state, which as a whole, increasing about 10%. But that zero to four year old population, our forecast is showing about a 14% increase essentially in babies and preschoolers. The school aged population, those five to 17, we expect to be about flat between 2020 and 2030 the forecast would expect there to be about an equal number at each time period. So implications from aging. Like I said, we believe it affects everything. So in terms of the labor force, we would anticipate that the labor force would continue to be tight in Colorado, especially as we are anticipating over the next five years that there will be 200,000 retirements, people leaving the labor force because they are aging which will have an impact on our migration and other things. But obviously age would affect consumer demand, but also services. 
again, do we need more senior centers? Do we need more schools? Things like that. So knowing these uh, dynamics for each county are important. It affects housing. And interestingly enough, it affects the rate or the racial and ethnic diversity that the youngest residents of our state tend to be more racially and ethnically diverse. That is that there are more people of color in the younger age groups than in the older age groups. So some other ways of looking at this aging phenomenon. This is the exact same data as those previous bar charts, but here we're looking at only five age groups, not the seven or eight that we had. But this idea that Colorado typically attracts people who are aged 25 to their mid thirties. We saw that on that migration chart. So when we look at these changes in age, the change, we see a big change for those people, that group of 25 to 44 year olds. So those are those two middle bars in the chart. The blue is 2020 and the orange is 2030. We would expect through net migration that Colorado's population as a whole will increase in that age group because we typically attract people in that age group. But the other age group that has a large increase, we already know is that 65 years and over. So on the right, we see the blue bar for 2020 and an increase of nearly 300,000, no, not that's no, about three, yeah, 300,000. We expect an additional 300,000 people in 2030 that are 65 years and over. But all this is contingent on the various assumptions we make when we are doing a forecast. And one of those assumptions is that people will continue to migrate to the state and that they will typically be in those younger age groups at 25 to mid 30s or 40s. So if we if the migration trends continue between 2020 and 2030, we would expect about 175,000 additional people in the state who are between the ages of 25 and 44. We would also expect this large increase in the 65 years and over age group but most of that has to do from aging. But what if there is no migration? What if for some reason, nobody moves to Colorado between 2020 and 2030, which we know is not the case because we're already into 2022, 20, oh my goodness, it's 2024. We're already four years into the decade. But this next slide will show that if we did not have this typical migration that we are expecting, we would not have growth in the 25 to 44 year old age group. In fact, the only age groups that would see an increase are 45 to 64, a small increase, but that 65 year and over age group. So there statewide, we would have a decline in the prime working age population and basically all growth in the state, if there was zero net migration over that 10 year period would be 65 years and over, but that's, not what we anticipate. We do anticipate going back a slide that we will continue those migration patterns that we have seen over the past decades. So let's talk about Larimer County specifically. We The next few slides are very detailed about the changes we anticipate in Larimer County. So fertility rate. We've, births is a big topic for school districts, but for demographics as a whole. And what we're looking at here is the change in fertility rate. Now, previous charts were like absolute numbers. There were this many births, but this is looking at the rate compared to people and people of childbearing age. And what we're seeing, this goes back to that idea that there have been fewer births to the youngest mothers and an increase in births to older mothers. The lines on this chart go from 2010 is the palest blue line to the darkest is the forecast for 2035. And essentially we've got age across the bottom. So from the age of 10 to 49 and the rate for fertility for each of those age groups. We've seen the rate decrease for those youngest mothers. So teenagers 10 through 13 up until about even the age of 28, that line each five year time period is coming lower. But when we get over the age of 30, we see these increases in the rate of fertility 
So we are anticipating an increased rate of fertility for women over the age of 30. Another way of looking at it, well, okay, that was future, this is looking past. So this, this is very similar to the previous chart, but this is for Larimer County only. And so this is age across the bottom, so 15 through 44, typical considered childbearing ages. So the change in the number of births by the age of mother. So decreases in births to the youngest mothers, but even unlike the state as a whole, a slight decrease uh, from mothers in their early 30s but definite increases in the number of births to older mothers, those in their mid thirties and up through the age of 44. So we talked about net migration for the state as a whole and for the state as a whole, the state tends to attract people between those ages of about 25 and 37, 38. It's quite different for Larimer County. And that has to do again with the university and the student population. Larimer County's net migration shows its peak at around the age of 19. So from about 18 through about 25, that's where Larimer County sees the bulk of its net migration by age. And then from about 28, 29 through the early 30s, there's net out migration. Now, that net out migration is not anywhere as large as the in migration. So yes, some of the students who come to study in Larimer County leave, but the out migration for those older age groups, typically people who have completed their education, is not as large as those coming in. Now Larimer County also sees positive net migration for almost every age from about 36 onward to about 90. So because of this, we can anticipate the change in the population by five-year age group for Larimer County from about 2022 to 2030. And in some ways, the only age groups where we anticipate a decrease are those between the ages of 60 and 70 and basically from five to 15. Now, again, this is looking year from 2022 how many people there were in each of those age groups to what we would expect to see in 2030. We already know that there's going to be a large increase in the population 75 years and over, and that is shown definitely in this chart, so on the far right. But we anticipate this migration trend statewide to continue, and therefore we are anticipating an increase in Larimer County's population for those age groups 35 all the way to 55. And of course, the increase from the 25 to 29 year olds as well. So what does that mean for Larimer County's births? Again, this is similar to the chart we saw before that was for the state as a whole. Here we're seeing births and deaths. Births are the blue line, deaths is the red, and the dashed line is the future. That's the forecast, the projection. So Larimer County, actually had a peak number of births in 2009. And you can kind of see that at the chart. There's this little peak in that blue line around the year 2009. Statewide, that happened to be in 2007. But since 2009, some stability, but it's gone, the number of births each year in Larimer County has decreased a bit. But you'll notice that we are anticipating an increase. Now, again, this is absolute numbers. This isn't necessarily about rate, but this whole idea that there has been an increase in fertility rate for the older mothers, those basically 30 and over. And because we would anticipate migration to the state to continue in those people about 25 to 37, we would anticipate Larimer County's population to increase in those age groups in addition to the increased fertility of those age groups, that's where we're seeing this increased in increase in the absolute number of births. Deaths, like the state as a whole, are are continued to are projected to continue to increase. But again, it's that aging of population. And we know that Larimer County has a larger share of people in that 65 and over age group to begin with. But overall, the 
natural increase, the births minus deaths, which is essentially that gap between the blue line and the red line, it came to quite a, a narrow opening there in 2020 as deaths increased during the pandemic. But we do expect there to be some natural increase, births minus deaths, due to that increasing in the number of births in Larimer from about 2024 to about 2040 years. So overall, the statewide forecast, we anticipate in Colorado that the population in 2050 will be about 7.5 million. And we're about at 5.8 right now. So that additional 1.6 million people, the vast majority of them will be located along the front range. Again, in this map, those counties shaded red, orange, or yellow. But of course, this is a forecast. There are lots of things that could affect it that we have no control over. One of which is international migration. One of it is the slower national growth that if the United States as a whole is growing more slowly, will there be competition for labor? Will we get those net migration for the jobs we have? Will that continue in the next few decades? How will Colorado compare when it comes to cost of living or housing costs? So if there is this competition among states for people in, the, in their working ages. So all sorts of things that are these uncertainties that may affect the forecast. But when it comes to Poudre School District as a whole, we know what we are anticipating for Larimer County, but demography is local. This is really going to depend on where within Larimer County growth is occurring. And one of those determinants is where new housing is being built. We saw earlier that there were several communities in Larimer County, like Timnip, like Wellington and Windsor, like Berthet and Johnstown, that had huge amounts of new houses constructed from 2010 to 2022. And those areas saw large changes in their population. So looking forward for the Poudre School District, it's important to know exactly where new housing is forecasted. Is Timnith, what are Timnith's plans? That's not something that we at the state have details on, but the zoning and the land use plans for the various municipalities are really going to be quite key to determining where some of this growth is going to go. That we're anticipating this population change, but where they actually settle, where they actually live, will likely be determined about by where new houses are located. And that overall, we if our migration patterns continue and we do attract people in the 25 to 37 year old age range, and if Larimer County increases its number of jobs, which we expect, as I mentioned earlier, the forecast for Larimer is at a faster rate than Colorado as a whole, at 13% compared to 10% population change. So we would expect Larimer to have new population, net migration, and in those age groups that are experiencing rates of higher fertility. So that concludes my prepared comments. Do feel free to contact me if I have not answered your question today or any other time, because we're here at the state to help you understand what the forecasts are showing for population in Colorado. Thank you so much, Nancy. That was great. Um, I'm going to ask the board if you have any questions. Uh, Nancy, is it okay if we ask them now uh, if we have questions? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yes, Thank you. So does anybody want to kick it off? Jim, go for it. Well, I'll take a shot. So just to set a little context that maybe you didn't set in your presentation, um, PSD is about two thirds of Larimer County. That's rough numbers based on the, some of the other demographics data. And Fort Collins is about three quarters of PSD. That's just some other <laughs> rough, rough data I wanted to get out there. Um, uh, you highlighted the two key factors as birth rates and migration rates, all of which I agree with. So um, women waiting longer to have children and that uh, what I also heard was the increased births from older women not completely making up for the drop in births in younger women, which all makes sense to me. 
I guess a big point on birth rates that I wanted to make was uh, I saw your slide with, with a projected increase in Larimer County birth rates, um, you know, um, which, which might make me think, oh, why are we doing this effort? Why do we need to do anything? <laughs> I think we do need to do things because uh, I think it's important to note that, that projection is a gradual increase from the current dip. And when you really think about how long it's going to take to those, for those kids to get into kindergarten and for those kids to get into fourth and fifth grade and really have a material impact on our enrollment, um, it is further out. So I think it is still important, important to note that um, that's, that we need to continue the work we're doing. And then the second key thing that was discussed was migration rates. Um, you talked about how migration and, and mobility are slowing and that the key factor around migration is jobs. And I think another key factor is affordable housing. And of course, those two are uh, interlinked, right? So for companies to move here and stay here, they need to feel that their workforce can live here. And it's difficult to afford a home in Fort Collins, especially for young families with elementary age children are, you know, the ones that we really want to grab. I mean, I have two daughters who both live in Greeley where houses are um, at least somewhat more affordable. So appreciate the presentation. Those were just the two notes that I wanted to make around birth rates and migration rates. Yes, thank, thank you. you very much. And those are exactly as you stated, yes. Does anybody else want to? I have a question. Go ahead. Kevin. Uh, and this didn't come up. I apologize. This didn't come up in my pre review, but it did come up tonight. On slide 13 of 33, uh, the slide that's entitled Jobs or People, um, mm -hmm. can I ask a, if you could unpack a bit the trends from 2025 to 2050 and what that decline and trend is based upon? If you could just elaborate a bit on that. I'd appreciate it. Um, in some ways, it's just sort of the maturing of the economy that uh, these are additional jobs each year. This is not total jobs in the economy. It's the increase each year. And so uh, as with the population of the state as a whole, it's not increasing nearly as fast as it has. And so, yes, Colorado is anticipating new jobs every year, but not nearly as much as there had been. So this is, it would be like a, um, probably if there was a 2% increase each year, it would be sort of staggered that way. And so our population also looks that way, that there's less increase each year as we get out further into the, into the millennium, I guess. No, into the uh, century. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Scott, go ahead. I don't know if you'd be able to answer this, but um, I'm just thinking about how hot the real estate market was just a couple of years ago. And um, if interest rates drop and the, um, I guess, delayed sellers decide to finally put their houses on the market, will that, how will that impact some of these projections? Um, I don't know, it's kind of a hard, hard thing to predict, but is that something that you guys think about in your, in your projections? Because it, it was kind of amazing how things were flying uh, just a couple of years ago. Right, and that how quickly, especially builders, retracted or uh, contracted their inventory when the interest rates became very high in late 2022-23. That changes to the construction industry are quite variable and are very much influenced by the economy. Things that we don't, not, not necessarily jobs, but interest rates, availability of money, um, nationwide trends. So in terms of this actual demographic change, these births, deaths, and migration, our model is not looking at cost of housing per se. We know it plays a role, and we know that the construction industry plays a role, that when there are new houses, and actually we have this whole other chart, where we're tracking the number of new houses built each year and how that compares to the change in population that would live in houses, our household population. And oddly enough, they do not match very well. That, say, during the 1990s, there was a lot of in-migration to the state, 
but the number of new houses being built for the early part of that decade didn't quite match the number of new population. Whereas during the Great Recession, when building stopped almost completely, not completely, but building contracted drastically. So the number of new housing units being completed in 2010, 2011, 2012 was very low, but population still kept increasing. And so we're seeing this odd mismatch so that when it comes to doing our forecast, when we're looking at births, deaths, and migration, the amount of housing, the uh, when it's being constructed and the number of units do not play a role in our forecast. But we do know that they affect individual counties, individual cities, things like that. Thank you. Yeah, Carolyn, go ahead. I think I have a similar question. Um, how does um, child care affect that? I mean, there seems to be a shortage of child care, and what child care there is is almost prohibitively expensive. Do you can take that into consideration at all? Not directly, but we do know, and we would anticipate from uh, other scholarly articles and things that perhaps that is already contributing to the decrease in the number of births. That if parents are not financially secure, if parents do not feel confident about their resources in terms of if they have a child, will they be will they continue to be able to work because there's available child care, because they have, say, family leave that they can leave their job to have a child and still go back to their job. All those types of things, all these financial uh, considerations that people might make when they decide to become parents. We think that so that cost of childcare and availability of childcare, we know probably throughout the country, but definitely in Colorado, that that is a huge factor. And so we think that's coming in earlier. That's coming in with people's decisions, we believe, to have children. And so that's more reflective, I think, in those fertility rates. Other questions? Yeah, Brian, go ahead. Nancy, this is Brian Kingsley, the superintendent. Thank you so much for your comprehensive presentation. I really appreciate that. I, I have a question around the data point that you shared that suggests that we are trending to have a 14% increase between 2020 and 2030 between children ages zero through four. Uh, we are about three months away from high school graduation season. And I'm so excited with partnership from the board and the team to probably shake the hands of just under 2,300 seniors. And a migration trend that I have witnessed as a member of this community for the past two and a half years is that local demographers have underestimated the migration of older age children into our community. Uh, we have declined in our student enrollment over the last several years, uh, but we have unanticipated older age children entering our system, so much so where we actually have over 100 seniors for the first time in our school district sitting in our seats this year. My question goes to incoming kindergarten students. Right now we are projecting just about 1,600 elementary age five-year-olds coming into our doors next year for the very first time. The difference between 1,600 and the 22 or 2,300 students I'm about to shake hands is quite significant as you can imagine. I guess the, my question rooted in your projection around the increase at 14% of children in Larimer County from ages zero to four, knowing we're already in 2024, do we have statistics through our hospital systems and things that you're tracking to show that we're on track to meet that 14% increase? Uh, the reason why I ask that question is as those children matriculate in age, they will certainly obviously come to kindergarten um, and we haven't seen them come to through our front doors yet. So I'm just wondering when you might be seeing a large influx of students at that age group coming into school-aged facilities across the county. Great question, yes. And in terms of just to comment on the older 
children, those who are probably 15, 16, 17. The idea that Larimer County had its peak number of births in recent years in 2009, so those kids are 14. So as if they're the largest number and as they're moving through junior year, senior year, that you would expect to see a continuing or leveling of those kids in high school right now. But every class behind them is smaller. And so this idea that if there's going to be this increase of zero to four-year-olds between 2020 and 2030, that in 2030, there's 14% more, it's still going to be a few years before those four-year-olds would matriculate into kindergarten, maybe just a year or two. But so you might begin to see that leading edge in 2031, 2032. Um, but these, the babies that are born by 2030, it would still be another five years before they would enter kindergarten. But I can talk to our, my colleague who does the forecast and who is very well versed in birth rates and tracking births and get more details on that for you though. That would be wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate your response. And I, I just had one question, Nancy, too, and that was, um, how is the state looking at um, migration expectations for those who are new to the U.S.? I know that that has changed drastically in the last six months, um, you know, let alone past couple of years. Yes, it's, again, international migration is not something that Colorado controls, and conditions can change drastically. In fact, during the pandemic in 2020, 2021, we had perhaps the lowest amount of international migration. Um, in talking to my colleague before I gave this presentation, she sort of said, we kind of hit rock bottom when it came to levels of immigration in 2021. So any increases that we're seeing now are definitely adding to the population. But in the news, when we're hearing about uh, asylum seekers and refugee seekers and uh, people being people coming to Denver. It's difficult to count, also mo mostly because we don't know how many are actually staying. Um, the most recent data we have, we get our immigration data and migration data from the Census Bureau, and we are going to be receiving the data for July of 2023, so almost a whole full year in arrears um, rather soon, but it's difficult to track. And with these more immediate changes of things going on at the border, it'll take a while before it funnels into our data, before we can understand, well, how many of the people who have shown up in Colorado are staying in Colorado? Um, just because they happen to be here now does not mean that this is their final destination. So international immigration is unfortunately rather tricky to count but we do know that we are seeing this difference, especially considering the fact that in 2020 and 21, we had some of the lowest international migration. Thank you. And any other questions? Going once, going twice. All right. Thank you so much, Nancy. That was wonderful. And uh, really thank you for your time and um, have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. Enjoy your <laughs> evening as well. Thank you.